Welcome to It's Your Case, presented by VetCT.com. I'm Amy Zaltzman, your radiologist on demand for this week. Today, we introduce our new theme of the month, Don't Get Your Gastrointestinal Tract in a Twist. Today's case is a 16 and a half year old male entire cardigan Welsh corgi who presents to us for non-productive retching for the past three hours. There is generally a loss of abdominal serosal contrast with a little bit of wispy soft tissue along the ventral area and mild partial effacement of the visceral margins due to visceral crowding. This is likely secondary to the massive distension of the gastric silhouette by marked distension with gas. It is also malpositioned. The pyloric antrum is positioned dorsally and rightward relative to the gastric body and fundus. At the level of the lower esophageal sphincter, there is focal narrowing or cinching. The duodenum contains a very small volume of gas and is dorsally positioned. We do not observe it in its normal position on the ventrodorsal view. The visible margins of the spleen are caudally and abnormally positioned. And slightly enlarged with rounded margins where visible. There are several mineral foci that are difficult to localize. These in the left caudal abdomen are likely associated with a faintly defined left renal silhouette and may represent nephroliths. This is superimposed with the region of the right renal silhouette, right ureter, as well as the gastric silhouette on all views. It is therefore difficult to know if this is associated with the urinary tract that is compressed or with the gastric gastric silhouette. We observed frequent degenerative changes associated with the vertebral column, such as spondylosis deformans, and in the visible portions, when we adjust for window width and window leveling, we do see that there are some bronchial changes in the caudal lung fields. These can indicate some chronic lower airway inflammation, which is not uncommon in a 16-year-old patient. Gastric malpositioning is consistent with gastric dilatation and volvulus, and with that, we see splenic malpositioning. There is a low volume of peritoneal effusion, which is likely going to be hemorrhage or serosanguinous fluid. We also suspect that there are multiple urinary calculi. The gastric malpositioning is pathognomonic for gastric dilatation with volvulus, or GDV. The most common rotation is a counterclockwise 270 degree rotation. The spleen travels with a greater curvature of the stomach due to the connection of short gastric arteries. Progressive gastric distension, secondary to occlusion of the esophagus and duodenum, often results in compression of the caudal vena cava, and frequently this can contribute to the patient's hypovolemic shock. It is common that peritoneal effusion that is observed with these patients is secondary to extravasation of fluid or the rupture of small vessels, and that is frequently why, is it, why it is serosanguinous or hemorrhagic. This is a surgical emergency so that we can provide or allow for revascularization of those strained gastric vessels. Common complications associated with the disease process can include gastroenteritis gastric necrosis, splenic infarction, or thromboembolic disease. Be sure to view the full report associated with this case, and thanks for listening. Remember, it's your case, so please post your questions on social media.